friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop, and we are on to the second phase of this mandolin build. I consider this phase one, or part one, getting it up to this point. As I mentioned in the last video, this is really only half the battle. I know it seems like it should be the whole thing, but it's not. It's nowhere near it. This is where the work begins, in my opinion. I've said that many times. A couple of days ago, I routed in the binding slots. I don't know how much of that I filmed, if any. And I just routed them in with my little uh, Dremel tool router and my little attachment that I've had. Uh, I think I showed some of that, but let me just show you the attachment up close. This attachment uh, is made by Stumac, or sold by Stumac, let's put it that way. And you can see here that I've modified mine. This, this brass part spins, and this here I made on the lathe and screws into the end of there. And it's basically the same diameter as the brass. Actually, it's just a few thousandths smaller so that the brass is the thing that mainly rolls. And I can, but this gives me a bigger handle to hold on to it and keep it flat and square to the sides of the mandolin. But anyway, I did improve their design, if you will. And that, just, that end just screws right onto the Dremel tool like so. And your bit sticks out through here. And then you can run it around the edge of the mandolin like so. And the bit is in here and cuts this slot. So that's how we do that. And of course that can't get everywhere. It can't get into these tiny corners like this. It can't get into the tight corners. It can't get around this scroll. So all that had to be cut by hand. So I've done that all off camera too. And I do that freehand with the Dremel tool with just a little um, kind of a, well it's a barrel rotary cutter if that makes any sense. And to be clear, here's what kind of cutter I use for that. And it's just a little cutter with a uh, it's kind of a spiraled cutter tip there, and I just freehand that in here. I just get into these tight spaces and hold the Dremel tool, and I hold everything real secure, get my both arms anchored good and flat, put my hand even on something to rest my hand on, and then that way I can move it very steadily. And I do a pretty good job. I, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it's, it's as close as you can get with a <laughs> mechanical tool like that. And then I clean it up with files, and I clean it up with uh, little X-Acto knives, knives and uh, scalpel knives and things that uh, some of my viewers have sent to me. Spent then about another three hours after all that just kind of sanding it, smoothing it, detailing the flower. You can see now the flower looks pretty smooth. I wouldn't even say it's perfect yet, but I spent a lot of time just on that flower. I bet I spent over an hour just on the flower alone on detailing it. And to do that, I get down with this little magnifier. I wonder, just as an example here, will that show up in here and maybe it'll, I'll put it on the flower and let's go up close. Oh, I think you can see it in there in the camera a little bit, how, like there, how, how big it makes it. It makes it huge. I'm trying to get it in that focus area there. But you can see it makes it absolutely huge. And so if you, the, the, my theory is, if I can make it look pretty good under this, then by eye it looks great. Because <laughs> this is probably at least 10 power, at least. And so if, you know, if you got that little tiny scratch at 10 power, well then it, you know, it's 10 times smaller like this. So it's, it's pretty good, you know. Uh, if you can get it really looking good under here, then it looks good by eye. So that's my theory and that's how I do it. We're at the point now where we're ready to put the binding on it and uh, that's a job, man, it really is. Not only because it's just kind of hard to do, but it's, uh, you have to make your own binding too. You know, I, I could just put on this, this, this cream colored strip that I think you can see there. I could just put the cream colored strip on and call it good. But you can see I have laminated on the back of this, I, I have laminated this white black stripe here or, and uh, that kind of just sets it off on the edge when you goes around the mandolin makes it look a lot better one of the very next things that we have to do on this mandolin is to make up some binding I'm using this is the older style binding that's the uh, you know hazmat stuff if you will <laughs> meaning that uh, you know, it's uh, hard to get and it costs a lot of money to have it shipped in. 
but uh, it's been in drawers for years and it's really curved and you can't hardly straighten it. You know, I wanna make a fancy binding. I'm wanting to laminate these on the edge like that. And um, the problem is uh, to laminate this, this is so curved and this, this is curved the other way. So I wanna try to straighten this thicker binding out a little bit. So I've got the heat gun here and I'm gonna just heat it up some and see if we can't get some of the curl out of this. Yeah, that's a lot straighter than it was. I wouldn't call it straight, but that's a lot better than having it just kinking and curling around really tight. So I think I can work with that at least. Well, we've got our little binding jig here. I've got some acetone. We'll slide the two pieces of binding that we're trying to join together or out a little bit there. Try to glue those ends. This jig puts pressure on it and makes it melt together is the idea. And so that's what I'm trying to do is get enough acetone on these two pieces to make them melt together. The other problem is keeping them lined up, you know, on the bottom as I'm putting them through here. It's not too bad once you get going, but the, at the beginning, it's a little tough. Keep it all level on the back side. The front side here will... Uh, just have to uh, make them the same height later because they're not the same height. The, the little piece that we're gluing on the bottom is a little wider than the main piece is thick. But not much you can do about stuff like that. I could try to take it down in my thickness sander, but it's not easy to do on the edge on a little thin piece like this. That's kind of what she looks like in the rough form there. Then we just have to let it hang up and dry all night and then we'll use it tomorrow. Anyway, that's what I do now. But the problem is those aren't created equal. This is this cream colored binding is a certain thickness and the width of that is wider. So now I have to scrape that down smooth. So that's what I'm getting ready to do right now. Okay, so I turn this, you know, the good side up, and uh, I've got the back flush already. And so now I need to make this little white black strip flush with the top of the cream colored strip. I'm pretty sure I showed that in video how I made this, but I just, to give you a close up of it, this is a binding press right here. And this is spring loaded, and you run your binding through here, the two pieces you want to join, and this squeezes them together, and you just paint acetone on there, and the acetone melts the two plastics together under this pressure. And then I let them hang up. Then I, I hung them by end and let them hang for, well, actually, this has been hanging four or five days. Normally, I just let it hang overnight, but I've been real busy, couldn't get back to this. I somehow or another built a retaining wall since, uh, I, <laughs> since I put these two pieces together. <laughs> so anyway, that's what we're doing. So I, I'm just taking my time here, get, getting that perfectly smooth and level. And also making sure that it, it is joined tightly because it can separate and I don't want any separation. When I get the one side smooth, then I'll go to the back and just make sure the back side is relatively smooth. And it, it already is pretty close, but that, that does do a real nice job. Try to get it to focus there. And uh, it really is a nice job, makes it nice and makes it look good. It's much better than just a single piece of binding. This stuff here is uh, Fairly flammable, but not as bad as the other stuff. This this cream colored stuff is what I have to pay the big bucks for and have it shipped in under hazmat. And uh, this stuff here is highly flammable. This stuff here is flammable, but not nearly as bad as the other stuff. So now I'm just gonna spend the next 15, 20 minutes cleaning this up 
and we'll show you what we're going to do after that. Well, as my luck would have it, there was a delamination, and that's not fun. So now I got to fix that. So I got to find where it's at again here. And so I've got some acetone in this little jar, and I just put it down in the crack like that, paint it in there really good, soften up the plastic as good as I can get it to soften up, and then just pull it through the press here and the press really squeezes it together really good. In fact, I'll go back through there a couple of times on that section to, to kind of melt it together as good as I can. And I'll let that set a little while and see if it's gonna, gonna hold. I, it takes two pieces of binding to do each uh, man, oh no, here's a piece separated on this one. Doggone it. <laughs> I can't believe it. Just isn't my day. Yeah, yeah these, these, this new binding, this PVC binding, just doesn't hold as good as the other stuff. I mean, this, this stuff on top holds really well, but the white, black down below is a PVC, and it just doesn't hold like the other stuff does. If you're blowing the same kind of binding to this, it sticks like iron, and you don't have to worry about it. But this stuff, it sticks kind of like okay. It doesn't stick great. Well, that's going to slow me down a little bit because i got to give that little bit of time to heal itself. Things change pretty fast around here. I'm pretty sure I wasn't wearing that Band-Aid in the last uh, shot. Let's just say it this way, the uh, disc sander won. This here is what I was doing at the time, and I made a wedge. And what I can do is I can slide this wedge in under the heat gun trigger, or between the heat gun trigger, and it keeps the heat gun on for me. And now I'm going to warm this up. I'm exaggerating the end on this. There's a slight curl back and I kind of exaggerating that there because it always goes away it seems like. And now I'm trying to get an idea of how long to make this. You do have to be careful because this stuff is very flammable and it will just instantly ignite if you hold it there very long. Okay, so now I've got this piece more or less shaped to fit here. And I've got it, you know, running long, which is fine. You know, you can cut them after you get them taped on or, bef you know, or, or cut them before. I'm gonna try to get it a little closer. I might be getting ahead of myself. I haven't cut my flats on here yet, and I think I'll go ahead and cut those flats on here before I actually go any further with this piece. This is fine where I'm at right now, but I think I'll cut these flats on here first. And these flats are for, bot or for these point protectors that go across and connect the binding. So we'll do that next. I'm going to ask your help here. If you happen to know where I can get another cutter that looks just like that for the Dremel tool, I'd appreciate knowing that. It would be kind of like a dovetail cutter. I don't know how well that's showing up here. Let's get the camera back a little bit better there and it might help. Anyway, that's what it is. I can't find a number for it. I've searched, you know, a lot of places looking for a cutter like this. I've had this one 
probably 35 years and uh, it's just wore out and I would like to have another one. I uh, just like the way it works on a lot of things. Like I use it to cut this flat on here. The bottom, the bottom end of it is a cutter and that bottom end being a cutter like that is what I'm looking for. Um, I mean, I've got, I've got some that are totally straight on both sides, but I, I like this one. I like the shape of it, the dovetail shape of it. So anyway, that's just, if you can find that and know where to get it, send me a link. I'd sure appreciate it. Here are my choices for what I have available. This is what they sell for this purpose. I don't like this stuff at all. Um, it's textured on one side, although that would go away, I'm sure, but it's just a plastic. It's very white. It doesn't really match it at all. And I don't think it's even big enough. Um, it really isn't. I don't even know why they sell that. It just, I guess you could use it if you were very careful and made these very small, but mine are never that small, or at least they don't seem to be. So that's out. So then these pieces are, I think these would be called Corian uh, countertop pieces. This one is a pearl, uh, looks like mother of pearl simulated, and it would be all right, I guess, but I don't think I like that either. These are all kind of a dull tone. This one's pretty white, similar to the other one. Um, you know, you could just use that and, and make it different on purpose, and it does match the white little line in here. Um, could probably get away with that, but I don't think I'm going to try that either. This one is kind of marbled a little bit. Getting closer here. It's going to be one of these three, I think. I'm not sure. I'm, these two here, I think, might be the exact same. This one is a little different. This one's kind of marbled. It doesn't, it's really not quite the same color anyway. This one's not the same color either, but it's in the, in, at least in the tint of the color, at least to me. I kind of think this is what I'm going to go with. Um, I don't know, just have to see. So first thing I'm going to do is cut off a piece that'll be long enough to use. And I'm going to cut it just a hair too long, of course, as always and just make sure that it's going to work up here too, but I'm, they should be the same. You know, that's a little extra length there. So I'll cut that off and then try to make two pieces that we can fasten on here and then shape them. I don't know how well that shows up on film on how tedious that is, how hard that is to do, but see you're trying to cut this plastic to match this back curve, to match this curve here, to make it the right width. Same way here, you're trying to get it to match this curve and here. And to be honest, at the moment it's just roughed out, but it's close, it's close. And so I think it's close enough that I can put the binding on it now and then I'll clean the rest of it up with little scrapers and things like that to clean it all up to the binding and, and make it look good. So it's, it's kind of, it's the old ugly duckly thing right now. It looks a little ugly at the moment, but it has to look ugly, seems like, before it turns into that beautiful swan. So you could just keep 
picking at it. Like right here, I feel a little bit of a ledge. I could probably take a little bit more off of that yet. I can always do that later too, so it's not that big a deal. So I guess we'll go back to trying to put some binding on this thing. This will be the first time that I've actually used the Formula 560 on a mandolin. I've done it on the guitar and a couple other repair jobs and things. So I'm hoping it's going to work good on the mandolin as well as it did on the guitar. The Where this comes up to a point here, you have to bevel the plastic down. I did that bevel with the Dremel tool in this case with the sander. Got it by eye pretty close. It's not perfect. We can tidy it up a little bit later if we, if we need to. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get the first piece on here and get it started. Now this end I didn't cut yet because I don't know how it's going to work out. I'm going to try to cut it after I get it taped up about so far and then cut it to fit. Now one advantage that the other glue has is that it does melt the plastic and where the ends come to a point like they do on the mandolin, it would melt those ends together. So I'm only going to put the glue on this part. I'm not going to put it on those points. In other words, I'm not going to put it on this bevel part right here. I will put the other kind of glue on this bevel and then uh, you know stick the two together and hopefully they'll melt together. But for right now, I'm just sticking it to the body. The other thing, of course, that I like about this glue is that it's water cleanup, which is really nice. This binding is standing up fairly proud, mostly because I've got that black white on the bottom of it. I probably could have taken this through my thickness sander and knocked it down a little bit. It probably wouldn't have hurt anything. And maybe I'll do that on the rest of it. You can scrape it down, but it's just a lot more scraping. I try to put different pieces of tape on in different directions. Not every single piece, but sometimes I pull down, sometimes I pull in. It depends on where you need to pull the most. Right now I need to pull it down, I think, and in, of course. That helps a lot. So now I can kind of see how far out we're coming here. Give me an idea where to cut it off. Most of the time I just cut it to rough length with the nippers like this. And I always cut it long, always cut it long. And then should be able to hack it down with this quite a bit and hopefully it'll work. I think that'll be close enough for now. I don't want to get it too small. Now we'll just get the rest of the glue in there. Normally I actually put the hardest piece on first, which is this big piece, but I thought I'd just try that technique and go that way first for a change. Might be the first time I ever did it that way. I can just see a little roughness in this edge. And you can go along there and file it together and make it look better. spent many hours, believe it or not, I would say six or seven hours just on this back binding and cleaning it up. Maybe not quite that much, but almost because I also detailed it, you know, sanding it and everything. I did a little more than just binding, but got a little bit of filler in here just in places, uh, just 
like grain filler type thing. Uh, there's little minor, I mean, they're just microscopic little minor defects in there. I haven't sanded that back off yet. But anyway, the back is pretty much done. You can see the bindings on there and there's a little, like I said, there's a little filler around. Filler really isn't, won't be there whenever I get it all sanded down. <clears throat> I'm ready to start on the front now. So, you know, I would say I have almost as many hours in that binding as I did in carving the top, you know. I mean, getting close. <clears throat> so it, it just takes time. And now I got to do this binding. And, you know, first thing I got to do is, first thing I got to do is level this off. Because this is standing up proud. You know, I, you got to understand, I probably got... I would say a couple of hundred videos in the can, seriously. And so there's just no way to keep track in your mind what you've put out and what you haven't put out. So if I've talked about this before, I apologize, but, but I have learned some new things about it and I wanted to pass them along. First of all, using it as the binding glue for this works awesome. It is really strong. I didn't realize how strong this stuff is, but it is very strong. It dries very quick. It glues this plastic to this wood like concrete, man. I mean, it really works good. Things I've learned about it are, number one, you know, I, I, I may have mentioned it in another video that I thought it was very much like tight bond. It's, it even kind of smells a little bit like tight bond. It's not tight bond, I can tell you that for sure, uh, because if you leave this on a brush and you let it dry and you, and you put your brush in water, tight bond will just come right off. It just, within five minutes, 10 minutes, it'll come right off, it'll dissolve. This, after laying in water for three or four days, still didn't dissolve. Now the brush softened up enough where I could scrape it out of the brush and reuse the brush. Uh, just happened to be one of my favorite brushes that I left it on there. But anyway, bottom line is, it's, it's not the same formula as that. It is much stronger for, for gluing plastic to wood. This stuff is killer, I'm telling you. It's really good stuff. So uh, you might want to do yourself a favor and get you some of that. Now, the other thing about it, I will tell you, is it seems to uh, be hard to get off of the wood if you let it dry. So my suggestion is, you know, while it's still wet, you can just clean it up real easy with water. So my suggestion is keep it cleaned up with water while you're doing your work, you'll be fine. But if you let it dry and you get it on top of your wood, it is kind of hard to get off. It's a little hard to scrape off. It's a little hard to sand off. So, you know, just be warned on that. But otherwise, this stuff's killer. It's especially killer on repairs where you've already got finish on the instrument and you're trying to re-glue the binding. You can put this on there and this won't hurt the finish at all, especially if you wipe it off while it's wet and get it cleaned up while it's wet. Where the other binding glues will melt your finish often. So this is, this is awesome. I'm telling you, it's the best stuff I've found ever for gluing this plastic to the wood. Do yourself a favor, get you some of that. You're gonna like it. Here we go, we're gonna start putting the binding on the front. When you're bending this, it, if you get a little bit of a tight bend in it, if you just heat it up, it'll, un, it'll relax itself right back out. If you just kind of hold it there like that, it'll finally kind of stay where you want it. It just, you have to let it kind of cool down that way. It, it, you know, it, it takes a while. I'm just guessing on this right now. I'm probably wrong, but just kind of eyeballing it. When I get it relatively close, then I try fitting it here and see what it looks like. Okay, we got to bend it a little further down instead of right there so much, which I kind of thought was going to be the case. Oh my gosh, I just barely left that long enough and I thought I had left it extra long. I thought I'd have at least an inch inch extra and sh man just barely gonna have enough and uh, it will be enough but just barely holy mackerel I didn't mean to cut it that close oh my gosh I got lucky on that one filing off the bevel here on the inside where the next piece will bevel up to this boy I mean just seriously just barely gonna make it 
but I think it will make it. That's the important thing. I'm going to do a little more fitting up with the uh, wood here. I think I've got to remove a little bit of wood in this area right here. So uh, that'll help too. That'll give me a little more length. Be very cautious about the direction you go up here on this grain because it definitely wants to tear out if you go the wrong way. Trial and error type of deal. You can't really rush it. You just got to take your time and work to it and see where it's fitting and where it's not fitting. I will say that cleaning it up with the water causes problems with your tape, so you got to be careful about that too. It's a balancing act, if you will. Looks like it's going to work out actually perfect on the length, but it's just, just perfect. It's not like there's any extra. Golly, it's crazy. I don't normally cut them like that. I would say it's exactly the right length. My goodness, I've never cut one that close, I don't think ever. Like I always say, better to be lucky than good. So that looks really good, I'm real happy with that. You can see right there that it really came right up to the end. And uh, when I 45 that and put the other piece in there, it'll be just perfect. But boy, I'm thankful that it was long enough. <laughs> My goodness. I don't think it was even a 64th too long. It's right on the money. <laughs> we'll bring you back and show you what it looks like as we get her all bound up here. West Virginia, I hope you're getting excited because we're getting very close. I did something a little different on this one, at least in the order of doing things. Uh, I went ahead and spent hours detailing the body here and the binding and everything, which I usually don't do till I'm ready to stain it. But I went ahead and did that now, even though I don't even have the fretboard made or the peg head done. And the only reason I did it was so that I, you know, could take my time, get it done. I didn't, you know, I always feel like I'm rushed to do that when I'm ready to stain it. So I thought, well, I'll do that now and get that out of the way. And then I'm still not completely done because I've only sanded it to 220. I'm going to probably still sand it to 400 yet before I do the staining and everything. But anyway, that is a big step out of the way. I probably spent six hours on that. And even though it looks like we're almost done, there's still a ton of work to do. I have to cut, hand cut out my own inlay. You know, I don't buy them pre-cut, so I have to hand cut out all of the shell that goes up here. Then I have to cut out the slots and inlay the shell and do all the fill and cleanup work and all the it's engraving that goes on top of that yet. So there's a ton of work with that yet. Not to mention I have to do all of the uh, binding around the peg head here and uh, cut those slots and you know bend that binding around these tight little curves and stuff, which is not easy. So there's a lot of work up just up there. We have to make a fretboard, put frets in it. You know, we have to cut it to shape first and then put frets in it and bind it and put dots in it and that sort of thing. So that takes a lot of work. Then there's a fretboard extension that goes on here yet that goes underneath the end of the fretboard that we have to make and put in here. And we have these two little filler pieces yet. That's it. When we get that done, we're ready to stain. But yeah, that's just a lot of work. Yeah. 